it it was me waking up to the truth of my life when i got quiet and really still i could really clearly see what the chips on the table so to speak and where i played the part in my marriage that crumbled and uh was i showing up to my loved ones in the highest um you know form of who i could be so um you know was i being um you know what were my emotions uh so many of my emotions throughout the years were just swept under the carpet and that's never good for anybody's health so i started walking the labyrinth i tuned in to the truth of really what was going on in my life and started to address things one by one almost like a, a detective would Good morning and welcome to the Fusionary Health Podcast. I'm Dr. Shivani Gupta, and this is the podcast dedicating to recalibrating your health every day. My goal is to help you wake up each day energized by addressing root causes and giving you new approaches to preventive health. The more we know about integrative health, the more empowered we are in building the vibrant health we want. Welcome to the Fusionary Health Podcast. I have a very special guest in store for you today. Her name is Elaine Glass, and she has a brand new book coming out right now called Get Quiet, and it's a Hay House book, and I'm so excited to have her on the podcast today. Welcome, Elaine. Thank you so much for having me, Shivani. You know, every time I see you and talk to you, Elaine, I feel like I'm with the presence of Mother Earth. Like you have so much peace to you and it's always been so, so nice. Every time we get to connect and, and chat, I'm always like, I wish I could be even 10% as grounded as Elaine is. <laughs> so thank you. Thank you for that acknowledgement. That means a lot. It wasn't always that way. So thank you for that acknowledgement. Well, will you share, you know, your journey and what brought you to this place of writing this book called Get Quiet? And then we're going to dive into what the paths are in this book that you spoke about. My journey, I'll begin with probably when um, my life was crashing down. I was uh, married, uh, but very unhappily married. I had two small sons. And I was on the brink of wanting to complete my marriage, but so much uncertainty, so much fear. And uh, was I going to mess my life up? Was I going to mess my kids' lives up? Um, but eventually after 13 years, I did choose to complete the marriage. And it was the, one of the most difficult uh, decisions I'd ever make. Uh, so I went on a journey to figure out what happened and make a wrong or right and to be the healthiest mother I could possibly be to my sons. That was really my whole entire focus. And I knew that I wanted to live my best life because I came in feeling, uh, I feel like I was born, we're all born, to, um, to know that we have a, a soul's calling and to live that soul's calling and get uh, in, in the business of living that soul's calling. Uh, but my life was so loud, I couldn't even hear what that could even possibly be. So I went on this 10-year uh, odyssey to, um, to find out what my soul's calling was, to get healthy mind, body, and soul, and uh, to raise healthy children. That's beautiful. And I love that you brought up noise. Like, of course, the book is called Get Quiet. So noise is the perfect contra, like contra contrasting word. Um, I find our lives are so noisy. The world, the modern day world, modern day times, there's so much coming at us. And I wish we all had tools and practices in place regularly built into our lifestyle to create peace. Um, oftentimes we're just bombarded and never carve out that kind of time. And so I love that we're speaking into this because so much of health can be vitamins and exercise and moving and doing. And so much of what I teach is the doing, do this, do that, avoid this, avoid that. And that's why I was so excited to have you on is because 
even I myself, I'm uh, of the dosha called pitta, and I teach about these doshas, vata, pitta, and kapha, and vata people are going to be anxious and running around like little tornadoes. Us pitta people, we're so ambitious, we're on our own racetracks to create and do and be in the world, and and like you said, achieve that soul's calling, but we're trying to do it real fast, like we want everything now. And then there's kapha, who does take things more slow and steady, but this idea of noise, can you speak a little more into that and how you were able to quiet the noise and the, the things that came into your life? I know you had a labyrinth that was a part of that journey. So what helped you quiet the noise and get quiet enough that you could tune into your soul's calling? Well, the first thing that I had to get quiet was my environment. Hmm. And yes, I did uh, randomly or not randomly bump into a guy at a coffee shop one day and I was rushing to pick up my kids in the carpool line. And uh, something inside of me just said to stop and take a moment with this guy. And we started to talk and waited for our coffees. And he ended up being in a addiction recovery. And he said, you know, I go to this place and there's a labyrinth and it might bring you peace that you're that you're looking for as well. So later that night, I, um, I stopped at the retreat center, started walking the labyrinth. And so the very first thing I did in that space was I got quiet. I got quiet in this beautiful nature, walking this beautiful labyrinth. I didn't know anything about a labyrinth. It's actually a 4,000 year old ancient contemplative meditative tool, um, and they knew they knew back then what really would help someone, you know, create uh, that peace for themselves and uh, to get to the center of ourselves and get to that soul's calling and to be able to even hear our soul. Mm -hmm. And um, so that was the first step was just to get quiet in nature, walking a labyrinth. And it changed my life. Wow. It's beautiful. It's beautiful how serendipitously and destined that was for you to find that place that would finally be that holding place for you to find that peace. Um, for so many people, I find they're constantly seeking. So it's like looking for coaches, looking for guidance, looking for the next thing. Um, when I have pursued my spiritual work, my spiritual study, I have found it to be the most nourishing thing I did to feel centered and grateful for what I already have, as opposed to staying on the hamster wheel of wanting more. And so when it comes to your path, what happened next? Like what, what was that journey for you to, to evolve into what has led you to now, which is writing the book? It, it was me waking up to the truth of my life. When I got quiet and really still, I could really clearly see what the chips on the table, so to speak. And where I played the part in my marriage that crumbled and uh, was I showing up to my loved ones in the highest, um, you know, form of who I could be. So, um, you know, was I being, um, you know, what were my emotions? Uh, so many of my emotions throughout the years were just swept under the carpet and that's never good for anybody's health. So I started walking the labyrinth. I tuned in to the truth of really what was going on in my life and started to address things one by one, almost like a, a detective would. The very first thing I was called to do was to look at the health of my body. Sure. What was off? What, what hormones were off? What I had thyroid issues. So how could I um, help myself with those types of, of, of problems with my health? Was I, 10 pounds overweight. I mean, I feel like I've, you know, we're always struggling with those 10, 15 pounds, but we look away and then another five pounds creeps on. So it was just paying attention and staying awake to my life in the health of my body. And that's really what spirituality is. It's nothing more than just staying awake for the truth of our life. So the very first step was nurturing my body. Mm -hmm. And the second step was my environment and cleaning and clearing out, um, the junk that I was storing, things that I didn't need in my drawers and my closets, outside storage units that I didn't even know where the key was, but I was paying monthly. So all of these things that were um, weighing heavy on me, not just my, say, weight that I was, weight, the weight I was carrying on my body, but the weight and the heaviness that I was carrying in my life. 
So I began to just um, clean and clear things out to become more light. And this is what creates peace in your life. This is what creates harmony in your body. So true. I, I love that. You know, I think we underestimate it. I know in health, a lot of us don't because we're into our health. We know when the body feels off and we're feeling that stack up of symptoms of inflammation or different issues. We're like, oh my gosh, I have to address this with my health. But I love that you brought up the weight of the things we own. I think about that a lot now because even when it comes to environmental toxins and dust, that's a factor. But also if our spaces are always crowded and messy and chaotic, then it's hard to get quiet. And right now I'm on this journey of writing a book and I notice that because my desk is always covered in things, I never want to sit at my desk and write. And so last week I just cleared everything out and then the room felt so zen and so peaceful that I, that last weekend I got to meditate in the corner. Like everything I wanted to do, I finally did again after a long time, but mainly because I'd cleaned the space out. And so I love that you took that next big step because so many of us have outside storage garages full of 800 pounds of stuff. And we forget that feng shui, vastu from India, these ancient wisdoms say that energetically those things have a hold on us. And so if we can release a lot of what we don't use, don't need, gift it to others, which is good karma, just move it right along to others who need it, then we are going to feel lighter and able to get quiet, feel peace and create that feeling that we want. That's absolutely right. And it's very cathartic. I remember going through childhood boxes. Excuse me, childhood boxes, I would go through them and sort through old letters from my grandparents or little, you know, knickknacks that I accumulated throughout the years. And, and even though I didn't want to hold on to them anymore, just processing those old memories really helps you um, know who you are, where you came from and the things that you want to carry forward and the things that you want to change. Uh, So cleaning and clearing your environment is not just things, but it can also be people as well. So what people in your life could be also weighing heavy on you and, and address those, those as well. And the next thing I did was I clean and cleared my mind. That's the next path on this journey was How could I get to no mind actually? So there was a lot, a lot of meditation. I'd been meditating since I was 16 years old, Mm -hmm. but now I was doing it regularly. And Mm -hmm. this, this was really the game changer for me was getting quiet and meditating and also being as present as I possibly can, because right now the noise is a huge distraction. True. We are so completely distracted. So how can we be present to every moment in our life? And that's what the third path is in the, in the book. When you say meditation was the biggest game changer, so many people have a hard time with meditation. And I even told my friend the other day, I was like, you know, I'm so overwhelmed. There's so many things going on. And even though I wish for so much of what's happening, it's like, there's a lot to manage at the same time. She goes, are you meditating? No. She goes, you need to be meditating. That's the key. And I thought, Ayurveda teaches yoga and meditation. I teach Ayurveda. I'm not doing my thing. Why is that? And I realized, oh, I'm sleeping later, waking up later. The habit went away and the weekends have all been really booked with kids activities. But then we could meditate any time of day. Like I could meditate in the afternoon during my tea time or at different points in the day. So what are your recommendations for people who say, I can't meditate or it's too hard or, or, um, I just can't get my mind quiet. So I hate it. And I end up jumping to other things. What is your guidance for them? I remember when I was working a nine to five job during my lunch break, I would go into my car and eat my lunch in a quiet place. Mm. So it's, it, you don't have to sit cross-legged in a dark room. Just get to a quiet place where there's less stimuli and so that you can just be with yourself and connect with yourself. You know, we all know what traditional meditation does, but really it's so simple just to get in a room by yourself and eat in peace and quiet. 
instead of the noise of your office or the noise of a, of a noisy restaurant <clears throat> with, with music blaring. I mean, you can't walk in even into a restaurant anymore without music blaring. I mean, how can you really fully digest your meal with this boom, boom in the background? I mean, it's, it's almost impossible. So it's just being present to your life. That's the main thing. And um, being, being present to your environment and also be present to the people you surround yourself with. That's the key. It's a big one. So let's talk about that a little bit because, you know, a lot of people teach, Tony Robbins teaches, you are the sum of the five people you surround yourself with. So many people in personal development say that. I have a hard time with it. I'm like, I picked my friends. I love my friends. Do you think I'm going to change my friends based on, you know, my business goals or something? No, I, I want to love who I love. But yes, I do agree that we should create healthy boundaries with people who might not be in resonance with us, where it's so obvious that like you are more going in that direction and I'm very much going in this direction and it's causing friction. Like I can tell energetically where I just have friction with people. And so my answer is always like, peace and love to you. We're not going to be friends. We're not going to hang out. I'm not texting. I'm not calling. <laughs> and so I think it is healthier. It's like almost like personal hygiene to keep clean and clear relationships with those who we are in resonance with and then hold that space and hold boundaries against those we're not. And when, when they evolve or we evolve to come back into resonance with each other, that's great. Um, but how do you look at it? How do you look at this notion of boundaries or do you have a health, a different word for boundaries with people? I look at this because most of the clients that come to me are women who are having issues with um, their partners, their, okay. their, their husbands. Hmm. And the woman is waking up to uh, her life and the husband is staying where he is and comfortable where he is. And this is, this is the biggest friction, I think, in relationships is between husband and wife, partner to partner. Oh. Uh, it could be business partner to business partner. And, um, so what do you do? I mean, uh, you, you could help the other person and guide them and help them to their awakening. Um, but no two people are going to be on the same path at the same time in the same momentum. And that's just the truth. It only becomes a problem when someone is really on opposite sides where the other one is just resisting, uh, to, to awaken, uh, to their life. And this is where a lot of relationships complete, um, as, as did mine. And so you do have to make um, very, very hard decisions based upon this awakening. And, you know, is that person, you know, are you pointing the finger at somebody or should you be pointing the finger back at you? Maybe you're the one that needs to wake up and be more present to your life. Sure. So there's this there's this back and forth that two people go through, but most of the time the friction in relationship is this, that two people just aren't growing in the same way. And that can cause a huge problem. And that's when you have to make a tough choice for yourself. You know, I know you do personal coaching and you do retreats and you do half day retreats, uh, one-on-one -on -one. when it comes to relationships and people, I agree with you. Typically, people aren't going to be on the exact same page at the same time on their spiritual journey. But where do you kind of find that line of just because one person, let's say the wife, is having a powerful spiritual awakening, evolution, change and growth moment? I'm sure everyone listening is like, well, yes. And shouldn't we keep the husband along for the ride? Like there's like, where's that line? Is it, is that line more around like personal, like where's your personal line with um, the friction in your life and people not being on the same page or how do you guide people to kind of understand how to approach that? Well, first I always ask, are you betraying yourself? Hmm. Okay. And uh, that can mean you are being dishonored and you're kind of like making excuses uh, for that person. You're not being honored. You're not being respected. You're 
uh, you're not being valued, you're not being heard. You know, we all want to be heard. We all want to feel like we matter. And if our partner is not receiving us that way, right, then it, it's just not going to work because we're human. And so, uh, so it's, it's really helping and guiding somebody to know when are they betraying themselves. And it's going to, it's going to, like it did for me, it's going to show up in your health because when I was betraying myself and I wasn't using my voice, yeah, it ended up as thyroid disease. Of course. Second chakra, blue chakra. That's right. And so, um, that's, that's going to be your first sign. How is my health? How is my physical health? How is my mental, emotional health? And if you're crying yourself to sleep every night, like I was, you've got a problem. Absolutely. Yeah, no, it's, it's so important. I think a lot of times we put ourselves on autopilot. I find that myself a lot. Like I decide a strategy, I decide a plan, I decide how life is going to look. And once I know I'm executing that, okay, good. It's working. I can thus be on autopilot. And every once in a while, I have these moments where I'm like, are you being fully present? Like I hadn't in a moment, like this glimmer last week where all of a sudden I was like, do you realize how good your life is? Do you even understand? Like, could there even be more that you want? You push so hard in your work. Can you just be grateful that you get to do the work? Like, it was just such an interesting moment. I was like, well, I should, I should sit in this level of gratitude and feel this high every day. This is crazy. But it really, the, the voice came in that said, just be really present. And present doesn't even begin to explain, like, be so in your life and aware of how, how it's going and bring your whole self to the table. That was the message I got. Cause like you talked about a lot of times we're we're holding so many pieces back. Maybe we're not bringing our entire self into a conversation or moment with someone because we've got other thoughts going on, other preconceived notions, who knows what's of others going on. But if you just brought your whole self to the table, the entire experience could be different. Partially because you're now experiencing yourselves as your whole selves. So you feel more in resonance as opposed to uncertain like I can tell sometimes when people are uncomfortable because I, I can't quite gauge like who they are or what they are and I think it's just because they're not bringing their full selves into the moments so I'm, I'm my body is not receiving the full picture and so when you did finally get quiet and begin these paths I know you journaled it was a long period of evolution with all this so will you share some of those paths like I know in the book you talk about the seven paths um, will you talk about some of those paths and how they supported you to get to the feeling and the, the place where you are now? Yes. The first path we, we so we've talked about three of the paths. So that was the first one was nurturing my body. Hmm. The second was the health of my environment. And the third path is the mind and cleaning and clearing out um, all the thoughts. Oh. Beautiful. And the fourth path was one of the most important for me. And that's when I did a lot of journaling. Mm -hmm. And that was to get rest, to give ourselves permission to actually rest. And this was the game changer because then I was able to receive. It was like that energy flow where if you're just giving, 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 there's the energy of receiving can't even enter and come in. It's like the, it's the clog in the, in the pipe. It just gets stuck. And so you have to have this beautiful back and forth flow of giving and receiving in relationships. If we're always giving, you're most likely going to going to attract takers. And that's when relationships can really go south. So you've got to learn how to receive in the resting. So in my resting, I received particularly insights and messages because my life had gotten so clean and clear that I was able to bring down these new, um, a new energy modality of healing. And so every path is associated with an energy point in our bodies to shift the energy and harmonize within. So this is the path particularly that I'm talking about a rest of the hips. Hmm. And I found that we have a lot of stuck emotions yes. of energy in our hips. And I, I also saw that we carry the world 
the weight of the world on our hips. Hmm. And so in Get Quiet, I actually help people and with a visualization that actually cleans and clears out that stuck energy in both the hips. And it's really, really a beautiful visualization. Um, after you rest, you ground yourself in all this new information, all this new knowledge. And this is really exciting because what I actually saw too was that we don't just ground to the earth, but we also ground above as well. So we're not only of earth, but we are of heaven as well. And we can actually live this way. And so this visualization of grounding downward and upward is really, really great in terms of the health of our bodies and feeling safe on the planet and feeling safe in our bodies. And the path after grounding mm. is our legs and moving our dreams forward. Because when we feel safe to dream again, it is the most exciting thing. A lot of my clients will come to me not even being able to know what they want for themselves because life has gotten so loud and so heavy and they've been helping other people dream and, and have others, others, other dreams come to fruition and not theirs. And so this is the path where you will be able to access your own dreams and then begin to move your own life forward. And that really is happiness. When we are stuck, we are not happy. But when we know we're, we're just going down that right path and moving our life forward and opportunities and people and things are coming into our way that are exciting, this really lights you up. And this is all, you know, everything is happening to bring ourselves closer to within ourselves. Everything. True. And, you know, I, that thought of what is your true soul's calling is so, um, it's interesting to me. I, I think interesting might not be the best word, but I'll use it. We come here, we set these goals, these targets for our education, our careers. We achieve those goals. Um, in my world, the women around me, we have our health goals. We have our goals with our household, our children, our relationships, our social relationships, our marriage relationships, and then our work. And it's so interesting if you watch social media, the level of programming that's trying to direct us to have everything optimal and perfect. A friend of mine calls it the Pinterest perfect life that pretty much drives us all crazy. Because if you wanted, I know in my case, if I wanted perfect home where everything looked stunning and furnished and decorated, perfect kids who listen to me, which as we, they get older, I'm learning is a near impossibility. Um, health being just optimal and, and working for you every day. And you're happy with everything health wise and marriage and, and, and we keep piling on. It's just, I find it's a distraction. I, I, I really do tune in often and I'm like, okay, you want a perfect house? Is that the priority? Or do you want to make new formulas? I want to make new formulas and change the world. Okay. Then keep the priority. And then in the business, it's like, okay, well you say you want to impact millions of lives. Are you putting yourself on just more hamster wheels or can you just be at peace, create the change and then have the confidence and inner knowing and faith that that will reverberate out to whoever's meant to receive it. And so when you said get quiet and really release things, I thought to myself, gosh, what if the whole world could get quiet enough to truly know their actual soul's calling and then get to pursue it in this life? So when you've worked with different clients and kind of helped them get to that point, what are some of the different outcomes that have come? I'm curious. Oh my goodness. I've been doing this over a decade. So every moment that I bring someone to the labyrinth who, whose life is so busy and hectic and they get quiet, they will hear their soul's voice the very first time they walk it. Um, a lot of messages like, um, uh, a lot of people first here, because this is what your spirit team and God wants you to know, is that you're going to be okay. This is, this is the main message. Um, and this is also very, um, very different for them because they haven't trusted the unseen. So I help them trust the unseen. So it's anything from you're going to be okay to 
uh, oh, that was God's voice. Mm. I've stopped my conversations with God through all the hectic, t- hectic years. Um, but now it's the remembrance of, wow, that, that presence is there for me, loving me, supporting me, and I've forgotten all about it. And I would say that's probably the biggest that happens to people. Is just finally hearing their own inner voice, their spirit team voice, God's voice inside of them. So they know that they are supported, loved. And that they are human. You know, we are living in such a digital age and it's wonderful in a lot of ways with so many opportunities. And at the same time, we're forgetting that we're actually human. It's true. And so I feel like getting quiet really helps people with human kindness. It's true. Because you can sink into your humanity. Yeah, it's it's almost like we're we're revving up to a pace that makes us inhuman. You know, sometimes I find the day is going so fast. When do you roll back that speed to function normally? You can correlate this to parasympathetic and sympathetic nervous system. If we're always in the sympathetic fight or flight, we're never in rest and digest. We're never actually going to let the brain tune in. And when you talk about soul's calling and have that team in place, I communicate with that team. And in Ayurveda, when we say body, mind, and spirit and alignment, and that being the goal of the entire lifestyle and way of life, what we're saying is let's bring body into alignment. Like you said, I had to get my health and my environment cleared up. Then mind had to quieten. I love it through yoga, um, meditation. I usually walk to clear my mind. And if I walk in nature, I can clear a lot of out everything out. And then tuning in, then is when spirit can come in and say, hey, that was wrong. This is great. You're supported. You're loved. Here's a new idea. Um, There's so much possibility there. And that evolution that we all have over time, I believe, um, it's one that can bring you so much comfort and so much peace. I would say that I was probably like a lost person for a long time, just working and doing, because I was told by my parents, you got to work, get married, have kids, build something, do something, you know, like you do the programming. And then all of a sudden you realize this whole process has to nourish me too. And so it sounds like to me, your book is giving this evolutionary journey to each person to walk each of the paths, which is a powerful remembrance of our individual ability to clean and clear, clear the paths, evolve through them, and then finally achieve that oneness with our soul's calling on this one life we have. Well, you said it beautifully. And this is what, this is what creates the wholeness and feeling within ourselves. This is what creates this uh, connection to our life force. And this is what ultimately unites us. True. There's so much uh, fear in separateness. And it, it doesn't feel good. This is what's causing so much friction, so much um, ill health. And it's, it's causing the human to not feel human. So when you go through these paths, finally tune in finally really hear what, why you are here and get about the business of doing that. It's, it's really a unifying, you know, we talked about relationships and the importance of how to, um, how to cultivate friendships and even how to find the right partner in life. Yeah. It's all around. Can you have this common um, unifying presence of purpose that you're both on purpose and when you it it could be totally two different purposes but when you and your partner are on a mission and on a purpose and listening to your soul's calling that's what unifies and strengthens relationships and ultimately the world absolutely absolutely and i agree with you when we're when we're unified, anything is possible. And and as you were speaking, I thought about it and I was like, you know, the lost years is when the kids were younger. That journey of pregnancy, breastfeeding, children was so um, 
overturning to self-identity and self-awareness because you're so focused on them, not you, that it took time until they were older and more settled till I could come back to who am I? What am I here for? What am I doing? Oh yeah, I'm here to change the world. Here's how. And then got really clear on what my purpose was. And since I have, since I brought purpose into such alignment, everything feels so good. Because I'm so clear on what I'm meant to do. And anytime I feel like I'm revving too fast, like I'm in sixth gear going at it. I'm like, what about you? Do you fit in the equation? Do you get to have self-care and good health as you teach all this stuff to everyone? Yes, you do. Roll that speed back just a little bit. And so when it comes to what you're talking about, what do you see for humanity? Because it sounds to me like you see this beautiful, unified human kindness world that is a utopia that I would love to see? Well, there are a lot of people living this reality. Hmm. This is, this is very real. I believe that the fear-based life is not a real life. I think the only real emotion is love. And Everything in society wants to bring us away from that because that sells. True. But it's not real. So getting quiet, walking a labyrinth, doing this inner work will bring you to really what is real. It's why we came here. It's why, it's why God created us, is to love, is to help the planet. And I know sometimes it's, it doesn't sound sexy, Sounds free and too easy is the problem. That's right. When really it's the whole goal. It's like the hazelnut chocolate in the middle. It's like the one thing that's the best part. And we're too busy running around, not realizing it's it's right here. That nectar in Ayurveda, we call it like nectar of the gods. Amrit. Like what if you just received it? You would feel incredible. You'd feel aligned. You'd feel whole. You'd feel true peace. And so I can feel that feeling you're talking about. And if you're listening to the podcast and you sometimes have those moments of, ah, like true, settled, nourished, wholeness, feeling grounded and aligned, what can you do to create that more often in your life? Absolutely. Absolutely. And the message is so simple, Shivani. It's, it's get quiet. And listen, it's just as simple as that. Easy. You know what I think? I think you have to, have to is the wrong way to say it. I think some of us have to build rituals in place so that we have created the space for it. Because if if your habit and your ritual is more like get up and go, run through your day, collapse and end the day, then this beautiful feeling you're talking about might not happen. So I love that you wrote a book that's going to help a lot of us who might not be in that mode, finally walk this path and release each layer so that we can finally get to that beautiful point of feeling like, okay, we have gotten quiet. We have aligned. And now we are hearing the voice and our own intuition guide us and that feeling of true love. And you are enough and you are smart enough and you deserve this. And your life does not have to be suffering and struggle. And you can make a choice today to live in more ease. You do not have to struggle. That might have been the people and your parents that came before you. But you can make a choice and a decision today to live with more ease and more peace. Now more than ever, it is possible because you do have more tools. There is more awareness um, on what you can put into place and more rituals than ever before. And it is so simple. It's just a choice. Do you want to suffer? Or do you want to say yes to your soul's calling and live the most amazing life you, you can't even imagine? You can't even imagine. So I'm just saying, yes, please say yes to your soul's calling. Get quiet enough to hear it. Don't be scared what you hear because it will be a big, it will be a big plan for you. 
but know that this is what you're made for. This is what you're here for. And to just get about the business of doing it. So true. It's, it's actually so true. I think when you kind of put that steering wheel into God's hands, a lot of times, if you can just let go, surrender, what comes is magic you couldn't have imagined. Like you just said, it's a completely different experience of life. It's because we're so tightly gripping on that steering wheel that we were, we're so in it. But the moment you can let go, surrender, get quiet, attune, it all comes together. So thank you so much for that. I, I really appreciate you coming onto the podcast and sharing about your book and your journey. Are there any final words that you have for our audience today? You are not alone. You have a huge spirit team. Trust the unseen. It is guiding you more than anything that you can see at this moment. And it may seem crazy. The people around you may think you've gone crazy, but it's not crazy. Trust. Trust the unseen. And there's so much there for you to guide you when you feel lost. And I, and I promise you, you will feel found again. Beautiful. Thank you. I love that. I feel like I'm going to have to take those clips and put them on my phone and listen to them every morning. I want like an Elaine, can you please make an app so I can just hear your voice every day reminding me of those messages and those affirmations. <laughs> I feel like we all need those beautiful reminders every single day. Um, and, and as we absorb them and hold them within ourselves, our life will change so beautifully. So thank you so much for coming on the podcast. I really appreciate you. Will you share where everyone can find the book, find your website and find you? Absolutely. It's been a pleasure, Shivani. Thank you so much. Uh, you can find me at elaineglass.com and the book is at getquiet.com. Easy, easy, easy. Well, so lovely to see you. Thank you for joining me. Um, and I can't wait to hear as your journey unfolds with this amazing book and the amount of peace you create. Because you're right, we have so many of us who are already in this resonance, already in this frequency. And the majority is us. We are unified in, in calling in peace, knowing that we are serving our higher calling. Um, and our job is just to keep saying love and get quiet is the message for all of us. That's right. Awesome. Thank you so much. I'll see you soon. Thank you. Thanks for joining me for this episode. Check out our sponsor, Fusionary Formulas, the potent turmeric supplement used by doctors around the U.S. for patients with pain and inflammation www.fusionaryformulas.com. I'm your host, Dr. Shivani Gupta. For more, visit shivanigupta.com. Subscribe to this podcast in Spotify or Apple Podcasts. Click the follow button or subscribe in any of the apps that you use. That's all I've got for you on the Fusionary Health Podcast this week. You have the power to transform your health and achieve vibrant health starting today.